good morning children i welcome you all to the next class of botany in today's class we are going to study about bacteria we have already studied or heard about bacteria are these bacteria are friend or foes foes means enemy you might have noticed during the preparation of curd in your home when the curd is prepared few con few drops of curd is added to the milk and is left for some time after few hours you can find the milk turns into curd so this change in the milk is brought about by the bacteria lactobacillus and the sour taste of the curd is due to the lactic acid present in it similarly you might have seen people suffering from typhoid typhoid a water born disease this disease is caused by salmonella typhi again it is a bacteria so from this we can conclude that bacteria is useful as well as it is harmful so we can say bacteria they are a friend as well as they are a foes now let's study about the contribution of robert koch robert henrich hermann koch was a german physician and a microbiologist he is considered as the founder of modern bacteriology he identified the causal organism for anthrax cholera and tuberculosis his experimental evidences on the concept of infection was proved by him in his koch postulates so koch postulates are four postulates are there so according to them the diseases and they are caused by some infectious organism this infectious organism they can be isolated when they are cultured the cultured organism can also cause the disease so he was awarded a nobel prize in medicine and physiology in the year 1905 Let's see the milestones in the bacteriology. In the year eighteen twenty nine, Ehrenberg coined the term bacterium. Before that, uh, although Antil von Leeuwenhoek he discovered the bacterium, but he called this bacterium as animalcules. So Ehrenberg was the first per, uh, person to give the term bacterium. Next. Christian Gram he introduced gram staining method so to classify this bacteria a staining method was uh, discovered this was discovered by Christian Gram so the staining method is called as a uh, gram staining method next you can see the contribution of Frederick Griffith he discovered the bacterial transformation so through his famous mouse experiment he found out that bacteria they can be transformed from non form to another joshua lederberg he discovered the plasmid na plasmid they are present inside the bacteria in some bacteria and by the discovery of this plasmid only the genetic engineering came into existence so let's study what is this bacteria na bacteria they are prokaryotic unicellular ubiquitous microscopic organism so prokaryotic means as we already studied they do not have a well developed nucleus or their uh, the nucleus is not bounded by nuclear membrane similarly cell organelles are also not membrane bounded next they are unicellular single cell organism ubiquitous means they are found in all type of habitats they are found in the fire they are found in the glaciers they are found in the ice in all extreme conditions they are present next they are microscopic organism they can be viewed only under the microscope so bacteria they are prokaryotic unicellular ubiquitous microscopic organism the study of bacteria is called bacteriology Bacteria was first discovered by a Dutch scientist Anton van Leeuwenhoek in 1676 and it was called as animalcules. Though in 1676 Leeuwenhoek 
discovered the bacteria but the term bacteria was given by Ehrenberg in the year 1829. Now let's study about the general features of bacteria. Bacteria they are prokaryotic organism and they lack nuclear membrane and membrane bound organelles as we have studied. Bacteria they are prokaryotic they do not have a well developed nucleus. Nucleus is not bounded by nuclear membrane. Next, mem uh, membrane bound organelles. Cell organelles are also not bounded by the uh, membrane. Next, the genetic material is called nucleoid or genophore or incipient nucleus. So as we have studied here, the genetic material is not surrounded by the nuclear membrane. It is called as nucleoid or genophore. In the bacteria you can find this uh, genetic material the DNA is present in the center of the cell it appears dark in color but it is not bounded by the nuclear membrane so such type of uh, uh, genetic material it is called as nucleoid or genophore or incipient nucleus next feature of bacteria is presence of cell wall bacteria cell wall is present and this cell wall is made up of polysaccharides and proteins. The cell wall of bacteria is made up of polysaccharides and proteins. Next feature about bacteria is most of the bacteria they lack chlorophyll. Chlorophyll is absent. Since they lack chlorophyll they cannot synthesize their food so their mode of nutrition is heterotrophic. Example Vibrio cholerae. Some type of bacteria they are autotrophic that is they possess the chlorophyll so bacteria the chlorophyll the found in the bacteria they are called as bacteria chlorophyll example for them is chromatia so we have studied bacteria they show both heterotrophic as well as autotrophic mode of nutrition next the reproduction of bacteria bacteria they reproduce vegetatively by binary fission so one bacterial cell it matures after maturing the DNA it will replicate and equal distribution of the DNA will take place and the cell will divide into two. So this type of division is called as binary fission or endosperm formation. This endosperm formation takes place only in the adverse condition when the condition is not suitable. So the what will happen inside the cell a thick cell a wall is laid okay to withstand the un uh, unsuitable condition so this is called as a spore and the spore is called as endospore so here the reproduction of bacteria takes place both by binary fission or during unfavorable condition it produces the endospore next feature about the bacteria is they exhibit variation variation means differences so here how this differences is taking place through genetic recombination. So this re genetic recombination takes place either through conjugation or transformation or transduction. All this will be studying in detail. Conjugation is transfer of the genetic material from uh, one bacteria to the another. Next transformation changing of the form. Transduction is induced type. Next we are going to study about the types of bacteria based on the shape and flagella. First let us study about the types of bacteria based on the shape. So here you can see bacteria they have four different shapes are present. Some bacteria they are spherical so they are called as focus. Spherical bacteria they are called as focus. Some bacteria they are rod shaped elongated structure they are called as bacillus. Some bacteria they are in the shape of a they are spiral shape or they are spring shape they are called as spirulum. Some bacteria they are in the form of a, a comma shape so that is called as vibrio. So here as we have studied the shape of the bacteria four different shapes you can see spherical shape. So as we have studied, bacteria they are unicellular, single cell. Sometimes two spherical bacteria will be present together. Spherical bacteria they are called as cocos. 
So when two spherical bacteria are present, we will call it as diplococcus. When a cluster, an aggregate of many cocos is present, we will call it as staphylococcus. When four uh, cocos is present together, we will call it as tetracocus. So when this uh, four spherical bacteria or the cocos bacteria, they are arranged in two planes. Okay, they are arranged in two planes. Then it is called as sarcina. If this cocos bacteria, they are arranged in the form of a long chain, then we will call it as streptococcus. Next is the bacillus type. So as we have studied, elongated rod shaped bacteria, they are called as bacillus. So single um, elongated bacteria, bacillus. If two bacteria, elongated bacillus bacteria is present together, we call it as diplobacillus. Third type as we have studied, if they are in the shape of a spring, we call it as spirillum. Next, if it is in the shape of a comma shape, we will call it as vibrio. Next classification of bacteria based on the presence and absence of flagella. Type of arrangement of flagella. Now flagella is what? It is a locomotory organ. If in a uh, bacillus bacteria only one flagella is present in one end in one pole then we call it as monotrichus. Only one flagella present in one pole in one end then we call it as monotrichus. So a group of flagella or a tuft of flagella as they are present in one end we will call it as lophotrichus. If a group of flagellas or tuft of flagellas, they are present in both the poles of the bacteria, then we call it as amphitrichus. If the flagellas, they are scattered all over the surface of the bacteria, then we call it as peritrichus. If the bacteria, they lack the flagella, we call it as atrichus. So here, it is clear based on the shape, four type you have studied. What are the four types? Focus, Bacillus, Spirulum, Vibrio. Next, based on the uh, arrangement of the flagella, we have studied. They are of five types. If only one flagella is present, Monotrichus. If a group of flagella is present, a bunch of flagella is present in one pole, we call it as Lophotrichus. If bunch of flagella are present in both the poles, we call it as Amphitrichus. If a flagellus they are scattered on the surface of the bacteria, we call it as peritrichus. If the flagella is absent in the bacteria, we call it as atrichus. Now let's study about the structure of a bacterial cell. A bacterial cell reveals three layers. They are capsule that is or the outer covering that is the glycocalyx, cell wall and cytoplasm. So here bacterial cell we can study under three headings, capsule or the glycocalyx, cell wall and cytoplasm. First let's study about the capsule or the glycocalyx. Before that let's see the diagram. Now here you can see an ultrastructure of a bacterial cell. An ultrastructure it is obtained by the high magnification under the electron microscope how we can observe a uh, bacteria that we are. Uh, that structure we are observe, uh, we are studying here. So here you can see the three layers you can see the outermost layer the capsule Be below the capsule you can see the cell wall below that is present the plasma membrane. This plasma membrane is enclosing the cytoplasm. Okay. Next here you can see this uh, plasma membrane they show a spiral uh, a curve. Okay. So that is called as the mesosome. So or we can say the plasma membrane they show some infolding. That infolding is called here the mesosome. Next here in the center of the bacterial cell you can say the genetic material is present. Okay but it is not surrounded by the nuclear membrane. This is called as the nucleoid or it is called as the genophore or it is also called as the incipient nucleus. Next you can see here on the surface of the cell wall there rises the flagella. Next you can see there is another circular DNA is present 
that is called the plasmid next there are many inclusions inclusions like the uh, ribosomes are there okay starts are there some other cell organelles are there they are called the inclusions here next we can find polyribosome polyribosomes means a chain of ribosomes that is what you can see here next you can find the pilus pilus they are shorter than the flagella okay they are the means of attachment pilus is meant for attachment with the another bacteria so this is the structure of the bacterial cell now let's study each part of the bacterial cell in detail first let's study about the capsule some bacteria so here not all the bacteria some bacteria they are surrounded by a gelatinous substance gelatinous substance means a sticky substance which consists of polysaccharides or polypeptide and sometimes both are present there this thick layer of glycocalyx okay that is this polysaccharide covering which is present outer and which is tightly fixed over the cell wall this is called as the capsule or the glycocalyx so here in some bacteria a gelatinous substance which is made up of polysaccharides or polypeptide are present this thick layer of glycocalyx which is uh, tightly bounded over the cell wall this is called as the capsule next let's study about the function of this capsule or the uh, glyc glycocalyx it protects the cell from desiccation and antibiotics in high temperature it is present in high temperature to pre pre uh, protect the cell from getting drying up this capsule is protecting the cell next antibiotics so here uh, when an antibiotic is taken in the presence of an antibiotic to protect the cell from this effect of this antibiotics this capsule gives protection to the bacteria the sticky nature as we have studied it is a uh, the capsule is made up of glycoproteins okay so here uh, polysaccharides or proteins are made or sometimes both are present there and it is just like a gelatinous substance so it is sticky in nature so the sticky nature helps this bacteria to attach to substrate like plant root surfaces next human teeth and tissues it helps to retain the nutrients in the bacterial cell next you are going to study about the cell wall the bacterial cell wall is granular and is rigid okay bacterial cell wall is rigid strong it provides protection and gives shape to the cell the chemical composition of the cell wall is rather complex and is made up of peptidoglycan or mucopeptide so the cell wall of bacteria it is made up of peptidoglycan or mucopeptide which consists of n acetyl glucosine or n acetyl muramic acid and peptide chain of four or five amino acids okay the one of the most abundant polypeptide called porin is present and it helps in the diffusion of the solutes so here uh, protein is found on the cell wall is called the porin this porin help in the transfer of the solutes inside the cell so that is what said diffusion of solutes inside the cell takes place with the help of the porin next is the plasma membrane as we studied in in uh, some bacteria the outermost layer is the capsule below that is present the cell wall below the cell wall is present the plasma membrane this plasma membrane is made up of lipoprotein the plasma membrane is made up of lipoproteins it controls the entry and exit of small molecules and ions the enzymes involved in the oxidation of metabolites that is the respiratory chain as well as the photosystems used in photosynthesis are present in the plasma membrane so here we are studying the plasma membrane is made up of lipoproteins okay it controls the entry and exit of the small molecules and ions okay next here they have the enzymes which is required for the respiration as well as the photosynthesis they are present in the plasma membrane 
Next, you are going to study about the cytoplasm. Cytoplasm is thick and semi-transparent. So, cytoplasm is uh, surrounded by the plasma membrane. The cytoplasm, they are thick and semi-transparent and it contains ribosomes and other cell inclusions. Cytoplasmic inclusions, they are glycogen is present there, poly beta hydroxy butyrate granules are present there, sulfur granules are in gas vesicles are present there. So, cytoplasm, they consist of ribosomes and some other cell inclusions. Next, you are going to study about the bacterial chromosome. A bacterial chromosome is single circular DNA molecule. So, here in the case of bacteria, the chromosome, it is a single circular DNA molecule. Only one single strand of uh, DNA molecule is present there. It is tightly coiled and is not enclosed in a membrane as we have studied here. In case of bacteria, bacteria is a prokaryote and the prokaryotes do not have the nuclear membrane. So, here the bacterial chromosome it consists of single circular DNA, okay, which is tightly coiled and is not surrounded by the nuclear membrane. The genetic material is called as nucleoid or genophore. It is amazing to know that DNA of E. coli which measures 1 millimeter long, so here the uh, DNA of the E. coli, okay. Uh, as we have studied, E. coli is also microscopic, but the length of the DNA is 1 millimeter long. When uncoiled, contains all the genetic information of the organism. The DNA is not bound to histone proteins. Now, here, as we have studied, the DNA uh, in the bacteria is made up of single circular DNA, uh, DNA molecule and is not bounded to histone proteins. If the histone proteins are present, it makes the uh, DNA to uh, give a compact structure. The single chromosome or the DNA molecule is circular and at one point it is attached to the plasma membrane. Okay, so here this DNA molecule of the bacteria they are circular in shape whereas in the eukaryotes it is linear straight whereas in the case of bacteria it is circular and is believed to attach and is uh, believed that it, this attachment may help in the separation of the two chromosomes after DNA replication. And this DNA, the circular DNA, one end of the circular DNA is attached to the plasma membrane for the replication of the DNA and their separa separation. Next, you are going to study about the plasmid. Plasmids, they are extra chromosomal double stranded circular self replicating autonomous elements. As we have studied in the bacteria, in the center of the cell, the DNA is present. Apart from this DNA, in the bacterial cell, there are some circular DNA is along with, apart from the nucleoid, extra circular DNA is present. That circular DNA is called as plasmid. They are circular self-replicating. They can also produce their own copies and they are autonomous elements. They are independent elements. The size of the plasmid varies from 1 to 500 kilobytes. Usually, plasmids contribute about 0.5 to 5 percent of the total DNA of the bacteria. So, the amount of the plasmid it is about uh, uh, 1, to 500, 1 to 500 kilobytes depending upon the total number of DNA present in the bacteria. They contain genes for fertility. The function of the plasmid is they contain gene for fertility. Fertility genes are present they are carried by the plasmid. Antibiotic resistance and heavy metals. Resistance against antibiotics or the heavy metals that is also carried by the plasmid. It helps in the production of bacteriocins and toxins which are not found in the bacterial chromosomes. So, bacteriocins, they are the proteins produced by the bacteria which is active against the other bacteria. So, bacteriocins, they will, they are active against, they are the proteins which is active against the other bacteria of different strains and they are produces the toxic substance which are not found in the bacterial chromosome. The number of plasmid per cell, it varies. Plasmids are classified into different types based on the function. 
Now based on the what the function they are doing, whether they are controlling the uh, fertility factor, whether they are controlling the fertility or whether they are giving resistance. So based on that, they are classified into different types. So some of them are fertility factor, resistance plasmids, colicin plasmids. Colicin is the uh, toxic substance produced by the E. coli. Root inducing plasmids. Root inducing plasmids means they are the uh, uh, plasmid. When this uh, uh, plasmids are found in the roots of the plant, they causes the growth of more roots in the plant. And then uh, the difference between the normal root and the root inducing uh, plasmid is uh, the normal root they show the geotrophic growth, whereas this root inducing plasmid when it is present, they will show the irregular growth they, uh, they show any pattern of growth they are not geotrophic always next is the tumor inducing plasmid tumor inducing plasmid means on the plants the uh, this uh, plasmid will cause the growth and extraordinary growth on the um, plant okay like the tumors next is we are going to study about the mesosomes Mesosomes, they are the localized infoldings of the plasma membrane produced into the cell in the form of vesicles, tubules and lamella. So as we have studied in the plasma membrane, this plasma membrane may show an infolding. It is in the form of a uh, tubule, vesicle or a tubules or a lamella layered it is or it is in the form of small vesicles. So the such they are called as the mesosomes. Mesosomes they are the infoldings of the plasma membrane. Now they are clumped and folded together to maximize their surface area. The major function of this mesosome is to increase the surface area and helps in respiration and in binary fission. So mesosomes they help in the respiration because the enzymes required for the respiration they are present in this plasma membrane. So they help in the respiration as well as in the binary fission. Next is polysomes or polyribosomes. The ribosomes, they are the site of protein synthesis. The number of ribosomes, they varies from 10,000 to 15,000. Okay, so here this polysomes or the polyribosomes. Poly means many ribosomes. Many ribosomes are present together. As we know these ribosomes, they are the site of protein synthesis. So at the time of protein synthesis, the message from the DNA is carried to the messenger RNA. See over the messenger RNA, this ribosomes units they are arranged, numerous ribosome units they are arranged over it. Such structure is called as polysomes or polyribosomes. So ribosomes are held together by messenger RNA and form the poly polyribosomes or polysomes. Now here. Another feature about the ribosome here, in the case of the bacteria, the uh, ribosomes, they are a 70S type of ribosomes. 70S is, S is what? It's a Soderberg unit. That is the sedimentation unit, rate of sedimentation. Okay. So, here, each ribosome, they consist of two subunits. One large unit will be there and a small unit. All these units, they will be wandering separately in the, they will be present separately in the cytoplasm. Only at the time of protein synthesis, these subunits, they will come and align themselves over the messenger RNA. So here, the, the two subunits which form the 70S, unit, uh, 70S type of ribosome of the prokaryotes is 50S and 30S. As we said, two units are there. One is the larger unit. The larger subunit is 50S and 30S is the smaller unit. Now, S is the... Uh, Cedarberg unit which denotes the rate of sedimentation. Next is the flagella. Certain motile bacteria, they have numerous thin hair like projections of variable le length emerging from the cell wall. They are called the flagella. So, flagella they are found only in the motile bacteria. It is 20 to 30 mu meter in diameter and 15 mu meter in length. The flagella of eukaryotic cell, they contains 9 plus 2 mic microtubules. So, here in the eukaryotic cell, okay, those cells which is having a well-developed nucleus in those organisms, the flagella, they are of the pattern 9 plus 2. So, 2 uh, microtubules are present in the center and it is surrounded by 9 microtubules. 
whereas in the case of bacteria only one fibril is present there but in each flagellum in bacteria is made up of single fibril flagella are used for locomotion okay based on the number and position we have already studied so monotrichus locotrichus amphitrichus peritrichus atrichus we have studied next is the fimbria or pili pili or fimbria they are the hair like appendages found on the surface of the cell wall of gram negative bacteria pili is found on the surface of the gram negative bacteria the pili they are of 0.2 to 20 mu meter length long with a diameter of 0.025 mu meter in addition to normal pili there are special type of pili which helps in conjugation conjugation means attachment of the cell which takes place with the help of the pili and they will form a conjugation tube through this conjugation tube only the genetic material will be transferred from one um, bacteria to the another